All right, so let's get started. We got one last reminder email just went out there. So hopefully we get a few more folks, but if not, um, we will get rolling here. I'm gonna put into the chat one more time what we should be looking for on Summit. So some of us just join, all right? And now let me share my screen and uh, show you that way as well, okay? So if you're on Summit, you wanna find our class, Fact or Fiction, right? Or excuse me, find our class, English One, our project, Fact or Fiction. And then you want to go to checkpoint two. It says three on mine, but on yours, it should say two, identifying central idea and selecting evidence and nonfiction, right? And then if you click the link in the box up here, it should bring you to this page right here that looks like this with these two tables on, okay? So go ahead, pull that up now if you can. Let me know if you don't see it there. Um, or anything looks fishy. Once you have this pulled up, uh, give me a thumbs up or tell me that you got it in the chat so I know everybody's on the same page and ready to continue, please. And again, one more time, you're going to our class on Summit, English One, Yes Philly, Fact or Fiction is our project. Scroll down, you'll see checkpoint two, identifying central idea and evidence and nonfiction. Click the link right here, and this is what you should have up on your screen, okay? So if your screen looks like mine, let me know in the chat with a thumbs up or tell me that you got it so that I know everybody is in the right spot. All right, I'll give you guys like another minute or so to pull that up. All right, how are we doing? Are we finding this? Pulling it up on Summit? Uh, anybody having any issues, any trouble finding this? Let me know in the chat or come off mute, please. So I know everybody's on the same page. And we're looking for checkpoint two. It says three on mine, but again, it'll say two on yours. Identifying central idea and evidence. And then this is what we should have up, okay? How are we doing? Do we have this? Any issues? Any questions? I'd like you to let me know in the chat, please, once you have this pulled up. So you're good to go. Welcome, iPhone. If you can change your name whenever you get a sec so I know who we got, that would be great. Thank you very much. Is that Deja again, I wonder? It is indeed excellent. All right, y'all. So, Deja, I know you're just joining us. So, one more time, we are on Summit. So, if you're able to access Summit right now, you want to head to our class, English One. Factor Fiction is our project. And then you want to look for, on yours, it'll say checkpoint two, identifying central idea and evidence. All right. And then you want to click the link right here in the box, and it should bring you to this page with these two tables on should look familiar to those of us who have been in class because it's it's pretty much modeled just like the the first checkpoint we did all right so how are we doing with this we have this pulled up is are people there can you let me know in the chat please when you have it all right i'll give everybody about maybe another minute to pull this up and then we're just going to keep moving forward All right, so we're pulling this up again. If I'm here from everybody, I'm going to assume that we have this and we're good to go. So if you're having an issue finding this, now is the time to uh, give me a shout and let me know. All right. Okay, so if you have this pulled up, you can see, like I said, it should look very familiar if you've been in class and you did checkpoint one, because it's laid out the same way. 
So what we're going to do here is we're going to fill out these two tables, uh, you know, to practice building our skill of pulling out central idea and the supporting evidence. All right. Because that's what we're going to need to do for our final product. Okay. So the first thing we want to put here is the title of the text. All right. Now I'm going to use this um, text as an example to do the first one. And then what's going to happen here is basically we're going to do this table this table together right now and then you guys are going to do the second table with this link that i've put in the checkpoint right here okay so you can see we're looking for the topic the major supporting details and the central idea all right now some of you took those pre-assessments so we know the central idea is basically like the theme that we look for in a fictional text except this time it's you know in a non-fictional text so it's kind of the the main argument, the the crux, the thesis that the author is trying to prove or trying to argue. So if you were um, writing a paper about why school should start later, you know, and again, we don't want to confuse topic with central idea, right? Uh, so just like, you know, a theme isn't, you know, a one word topic, it should be kind of like a lesson or a message that we can take away. Central idea you want to kind of look for the same thing. So our topic might be school, right? And then our central idea might be that, you know, we should start school later because it, you know, helps, you know, students have better brain function or something like that. And then you would find the details to kind of support that, right? Does that make sense so far? Any questions about anything? And like we did with the last one, what we can kind of do here is sort of work backwards and we'll, we'll find the topic and we'll find the central idea first and then we'll go in and find some of the major supporting details, all right? Now, the article that you read, you can see, you know, these are nonfiction articles. So they might be a little bit on the, the longer side, but it's not too bad, all right? So this is the one, like this is the one you guys are gonna use for the checkpoint. You can see this one, it's just kind of like a numbered list, not, not too, too long, all right? So if I was filling out this table, how would I start, okay? The first thing I need is nonfiction, the name of the text. So, okay, here's my title, Your Brain on Poverty, Why Poor People Seem to Make Bad Decisions, all right? So this is as easy as just copy and pasting that into the table, because that's the name of the text, all right? So first part done. Now I can probably, just from reading that title, fill in my topic box here too, all right? So if this is kind of the name of our, 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 our article, what do we think the topic of this article might be, all right? Again, we're not looking for the central idea yet. We're not looking for the main argument. We're just looking for, if we had to label this under a specific topic, what do you think that would be for this article? Can you tell me in the chat or come off mute if you are able? What do we think the topic for this article is based on, based on this title and the kind of tagline here? Anybody with a thought for that? Remember y'all, the more we're engaging back and forth, the quicker these classes go. The less we do that, the more we sit in awkward silence. You gotta help me help you. So based on this, this title and this tagline of this article, what do we think the topic might be? Can we come up with a topic for this that we can put into our table here? What do you think? Anybody out there who can help me out? You can answer in the chat. You can come off mute. Why people seem to make bad decisions. Why you're super, super close. Why what kind of people specifically? Why poor people, it says. Right. So that's our title. But now we don't want to just, 
you know, copy our title into here. So how can we how can we sum that up in our own words? If we know this is the title, this is kind of what it's talking about. And I said, you know, what's the topic of this article? What would you say to me in your own words? Is there maybe like a one or two one or two word topic we could label this this article under based on what the title seems to suggest? What do you think? All right. We know we see this word in the title, poverty, right? We know we see these words over here, make bad, make bad decisions, right? So maybe, um, you know, do we think that this title is implying that sometimes, you know, uh, poverty can make people make bad decisions? Yes or no? Yeah, you're right, Amir. So then could we also say then, if that's the case, that making poor, making bad decisions might be one of the effects of poverty? Could we say that too, do you think? Definitely, right? So then that, I think, is what we can put for our topic here, right? So our topic could be... Um, effects of poverty, all right? And then we could say specifically um, decision-making, right? So now we have a topic. And again, if you have this checkpoint pulled up and you wanna follow along with what I'm putting in my table here, feel free, that's why we're doing it this way now, okay? So we have the title up here, we have our topic, Right now we need our central idea, right? And again, because it's nonfiction, you'll be able to do that a lot of the times. You'll be able to get your topic pretty much right away because a lot of nonfiction titles are kind of really descriptive about that topic. So you'll be able to kind of do the same thing here when you read this article to do the second half of the table. So these first two parts of the table, the, the title and the topic, you should be able to fill out almost kind of right away. All right, and when you're filling out the topic again, remember we, we don't just want to re, you know, state the title in there. See if you can break it down into like, okay, one or two words. What is this? What is this article really talking about? All right, and that's like we, what we did here: the effects of poverty, specifically decision making. That's our topic. Now we want our central idea. What's our main argument? What's our main kind of thesis here? All right. So to do that, this is where we're probably gonna have to read through, you know, the article maybe once or twice. All right. So I'm gonna read through this. If there's a point where we think we can stop because we've figured out what the central idea might be, then maybe we can stop, fill it in our table, and then we can kind of work from there. All right. Um, because I know, like I said, these are a little bit long, but nothing that we can't handle. In August, science published a landmark study uh, concluding that poverty itself hurts our ability to make decisions about school, finances, and life, imposing a mental burden similar to losing 13 IQ points. Right? It was widely seen as a counter argument to claim that poor people are, quote unquote, to blame for bad decisions and a rebuke to policies that withhold money from the poorest families unless they behave in a certain way. After all, if being poor leads to bad decision making, as opposed to the other way around, then giving cash should alleviate the cognitive burdens of poverty all on its own. Sometimes science doesn't uh, stick without a proper anecdote and quote unquote, why I make terrible decisions, a comment uh, published on Gawker's Kinja platform by a person in poverty is a devastating illustration of the science study. I've bolded what I found the most moving insightful portions, but it's moving in a cycle testimony all the way through. So we'll just read these bold parts here for now, right? I make a lot of poor financial decisions. None of them matter in the long uh, term. I will never not be poor. So what does it matter if I don't pay a thing 
uh, and a half this week instead of just one thing. And then they go on to say, you have, ne you have no idea how strong the pool to feel worthwhile is. It's more basic than food. And then lastly, they go on to say, um, we don't plan long term because if we do, we'll just get our hearts broken. It's best not to hope. You just take what you can get as you spot it. All right, and the article continues on here. When neuroscientists Joseph W. Cable and Joseph T. McGuire studied time, uncertainty, and decision making, they found that the virtues uh, like patience and self control weren't as simple, uh, weren't as simple previous studies suggested. In the ubiquitous marshmallow study, that means it kind of covers everything, right? In the ubiquitous marshmallow study, for example, kids who ate the treat quickly were deemed impatient and kids who waited had self-control and on the whole went on to lead more productive lives, the study found. All right, hey Sierra, welcome. You're kind of catching us halfway through. Uh, you can pull up checkpoint two. Uh, it says three on my page, but it'll say checkpoint two on your summit. And we're kind of going over how to fill out this first table here. And then you guys are gonna fill out the second one by yourselves, all right? And so we're kind of reading through this article now to see if we can fill out the rest of these boxes about the central idea and the major details. Right. Uh, lead more kind of lives the study found. But rational self-control in the real, real world, Cable says, isn't so black and white. Perhaps you have enough patience to wait an hour for a train or to lose one pound each week with exercise and dieting. That sounds responsible. But what happens if the train isn't there in 90 minutes? If you never lose weight and you're making yourself miserable with your diet, maybe you should give up. Quote, in this situation, giving up can be a natural, indeed a rational response to a time frame that wasn't properly framed to begin with, end quote. Maria uh, Konnikova summed it up for the Times. As Andrew Gallus points out, this might suggest something even deeper than the idea that poverty stress interferes with our ability to make good decisions. The inescapability of poverty weighs so heavily um, on the author that she or he abandons long-term planning entirely because the short-term needs are so great and the long-term gains so implausible, right? What does that mean, implausible? Any guesses on what that word implausible might mean? Sounds a lot like another word we all know, so that should give you a hint. No, any clues, any guesses what this word implausible might mean? So something's plausible, it means that it's feasible, right? It makes sense that it could happen. If it's implausible, just like impossible, that would be the opposite. So they, what they're saying here is the short-term needs are so great because you're in poverty and the long-term gain. So like, okay, I'm gonna save and you know, in a year or two, I'll have money to do X, Y, and Z. Those are so implausible because, you know, are so unlikely to happen because you know, what you need to accomplish in the short term, like, you know, having something to eat that night um, takes much more, much more precedence. Train is just not coming. What if the psychology of poverty, which can appear so irrational to those not in poverty, is actually the most rational response to a world of chaos and unpredictable outcomes? He wrote, none of this is an argument against poorer families trying to save or plan for the long term. It's an argument for context. As Elder Shafir, the author of Science Study, told the Atlantic City's Emily Badger, all the data shows uh, it isn't about poor people. It's about people who happen to be in poverty. All the data suggests it's not the person, it's the context, 
they're inhabiting. Okay. So we've read through the article ones, all right? Now we can try and go back and see if we can pull out, okay, what's the central idea? What's the main, you know, thesis this guy is arguing? Now, again, this should be different than the topic, right? The topic is just kind of going to be, you know, what we would sort this article into. The central idea is going to be more of like the specific thesis specific argument this author is making very similar to when we did fiction and we said okay the topic could be like race or family or history and then the theme might be you know the theme should be a lesson we learn about that topic something like that so based on that did anything does anything jump out right away at you from this article that we read of what the central idea might be? <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody who can tell us in the chat or come off mute what the central idea might be? And a good hint here to find that when you're looking for it is, you know, remember when you write, um, you know, when you've written papers for myself or Miss Christina before, and you're supposed to put a thesis or a topic statement in there, where does it usually go? You know, does it usually go at the, the beginning, at the end, somewhere in the middle? If you know that, then you know where to look to find kind of where your central idea is going to be in, in this article. All right. So knowing that, what do we think is a good guess for our central idea? Some of the bold letters, I like that thought, Amir. Those, I think, let's keep in mind when we look for supporting details, all right? Because those kind of bolded stuff is some something from the kind of testimonial of a person in poverty. So those are going to be really good supporting details to help prove our central idea. That's why he puts them in there. So let's back up a little bit before that and look specifically maybe in this first or second paragraph right here that I have highlighted not the ad for the daily newsletter. But in this first or second paragraph right here, is there a sentence or two that we think could we could use as our central idea? What do you think? Maybe somebody we haven't heard from yet this morning because Amir has been crushing it. Is there a sentence or two in these paragraphs I have highlighted that we might be able to use for our central idea? Kira, Nishan, Sammy, any thoughts from anyone else? What do we think? What do you think? Anything jump out there? How about let's read through this first paragraph again and see if anything jumps out as something that might be considered the central idea, the main kind of argument that they're making, all right? In August, Science, the name of the magazine, published a landmark study concluding that poverty itself hurts our ability to make decisions about school finances and life, imposing a mental burden similar to losing 13 IQ points. Now, if we go back to our table and we know this is our topic, the effects of poverty, specifically decision-making, what sentence in that first paragraph do we think would make a good, or what part of that good for first paragraph would make a good central idea, right? So if this is our topic, what is the central idea about this topic in this within this article that we could put in our chart? 
from that first paragraph I just reread. Anything jump out at anyone? Where it say poverty itself hurts our uh, ability to make decisions about school. Exactly, exactly. So I would take <clears throat> this whole thing right here. Poverty itself hurts our ability to make decisions about school finances and life imposing a mental burden similar to losing 13 IQ points, all right? That's our argument. That's what this dude is trying to prove. He's saying, so just like when you're writing an argument of peace about, you know, this is why we shouldn't have school uniforms. This is why we should go to school later. This is why um, we should be able to, to drink at a certain age, right? You're making that claim and now you want to prove to me why that's the case. He's doing the same exact thing here. And this is the claim he's proving that poverty itself uh, hurts our decision-making <clears throat> so much so that it's, it's the same thing as losing 13 IQ points. <clears throat> so the whole crux, the whole crux here is that it's not the person in poverty, it's the poverty itself affecting the way that person is behaving. It's the context. So because this is um, nonfiction, right? There's a little bit more leeway with, uh, you know, copy pasting stuff, right? So I'm going to take that and I'm going to copy paste that right into our table as well. All right. So now I have two parts here. I have, uh, well, three, I have, the, you know, our title, obviously I have um, our topic and then I have our central idea. And like I said, now we can work backwards. And if I know this is the central idea we're trying to prove, I can start to fill in some of these major supporting detail boxes. All right. So now we can go back to the article and try and pull some of those out. Now, Amir already pulled out one when he said, what about the stuff that's bolded? Okay. So those are all great central ideas or excuse me, supporting details because they're testimony from an actual impoverished person detailing why they make decisions the way they do. All right. Specifically, I, you know, if you were doing this, you could take whichever one uh, you, think, you think works best. I am going to take the last one down here where he says, we don't plan long-term because if we do, we'll just get our hearts broken. It's best not to hope. All right. So now I'm going to copy that and I'm going to put that in uh, our table. And now what do I have to put around this if I'm putting it in our table? Because I know it's not something in my own words. All right, I copy paste this here. And now what should I put around that to let people know that? Can you put um where that um where that um article at? This article I will put the link in the chat to. I didn't put it on the checkpoint because we're kind of doing it together as an example. But yeah, I ain't want I want I want copy and paste like how you do. I ain't want Oh, I see what you're saying. Well you can also copy from um oh no, because I'm doing this on the on my demo notebook. Should have, been, should have been doing this on the regular checkpoint. Uh, all right, yeah, I'll put the article in the chat and I'll also leave my my table up there for the last few minutes so you guys can copy it for there as well if you wanna do that too. But here is the link to the article. All right. So I wanna copy paste that and then I wanna put quotation marks around it because it is uh, somebody else's words, right? So. I want to do that right there, okay? So that's one uh, major supporting detail down, all right? Now I need two more. So what other supporting details can we find in here, all right? So we can look down where he's citing these kind of other studies. So maybe this part right here, as Andrew Galls points out, this might suggest something even deeper than the idea that poverty stress interferes with our ability to make good decisions. The inescapability of poverty weighs so heavily on the author that she or he 
abandons the long-term planning entirely because short-term so great and the gains are implausible, right? That's another good one. So I can copy paste that one, right? And I would put it in my table. Okay, put some quotes around that as well. Mister, can you can you copy and paste it into the chat so we don't have to keep going back and forth? Yeah, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, put all this stuff on. I should have done it on. I'm doing it on my demo notebook, but I should have just done it on the regular checkpoint so that it would just um, populate in there for you guys. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it up in there after class is done, and we. I'm going to leave this up here um, on my screen. Um, for a little bit too before we leave today so you can copy it that way as well that's i i didn't think of that to not to put it on the the checkpoint itself instead of the demo notebook that's my bad all right so that's our second supporting detail now we would need right so let's look at our table okay now we need one more all right so what's one more supporting detail we have in here that can help prove this central idea that poverty itself hurts you know our ability almost like it's hurting our iq all right And I think maybe I like this last quote right here, where they say, um, all the data shows it isn't about poor people, it's about people who happen to be in poverty. All the data suggests it's not the person, it's the context they're inhabiting, right? So I can copy that and put it in my chart as well. Okay, now what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna go back in here and I'm gonna cite uh, each one of those so I know who said that quote so I can give them proper credit because that's what we always wanna do when we're um, using our supporting details, all right? Right. So this first one is from the article "Why I Make Terrible Decisions," published on uh, Kinja. All right. So I would put that here. So when I said it, I would just say from "Why I Make Terrible Decisions." Okay, that's the name of the the thing. Right. Now I would want to cite this one here. Okay. So I would go back and look at that quote. Andrew Gallus points out, this might suggest, me. so, okay. So that's my, my source for that quote, Andrew Gallus, all right? And if I wanted to go into even more detail, I could click that link and then it would take me to, to his article, all right? But we don't need to do that for right now. And then this last quote, all right? Elder the author of the science study, told the Atlantic City's Emily Badger. So Elder Shafir, that's our, our source for the last quote, right? I'm gonna cite him here. Okay, so now my table is done. I have my topic, I have my central idea, and we've worked backwards to find three good supporting details, and we've cited them as well, okay? That helped to prove the central idea right here, all right? What you're gonna do, all right, between now and um, Tuesday, since we don't have class on Friday, okay? So plenty of time to work on this. You're gonna fill out this table the exact same way we filled out this one using this link right here, right? It's called when you're in a good relationship, you learn these 10 things. And today, so you wanna look through, okay, what's the topic of this? What's our central idea? And then fill out the table accordingly, all right? What I'm going to do with the time we have left, which is about 10 minutes, is I'm going to leave um, my table up here. Let me zoom out a little bit so it's easier to see, okay? I'm 
I'm going to leave my table up here on my screen share. So if you want to copy it, um, if you want to copy this stuff into your table, um, you know, you can have your summit up and my screen share up at the same time, and then just kind of go back and forth and type this stuff in here. All right. I will also copy it into um, the actual checkpoint rather than just the demo notebook after class is done so that um, you guys will have it in there as well, okay? So that's what you can be doing for the net, the last 10 minutes or so we have here is go ahead and copy as much of this into your table down as you can, all right? Also, you kind of get a free yellow checkpoint by copying it down because I know you've at least started it. So bonus uh, there as well, right? So go ahead, copy this down into yours. And, um, you know, if you want to screenshot stuff and, uh, you know, do it later, you can do it that way as well. And um, in about 10 minutes, we'll kind of wrap everything up here, okay? So I'm going to leave this up here for a few um, while you guys can copy this down.
are y'all how we doing here are we getting this kind of copied and stuff we're just about to wrap up we got about two minutes All right question about anything that you guys are working on All right, so once again, if you get this top part filled in, you're going to do the bottom part yourselves the same way we kind of went through the top part together. And you're going to use this link right here that should be on the checkpoint for you already. All right. And then I need to see that by um, beginning of class next Tuesday, since we don't have class Friday, because um, we have a um, teacher training day. If you didn't get everything copied down, that's okay. Um, I'm going to um, copy and paste it onto the actual checkpoint itself. So it'll be there um, for anybody who missed it. And the uh, class recording will be up on YouTube in case you came in kind of halfway through. So you can kind of see what we were talking about. All right. So if you still haven't turned in checkpoint one to me, make sure you do that um, ASAP. Um, and then uh, this is what we're going to be looking for for next Tuesday. And then next Tuesday, we'll introduce our final product. And then you'll have the rest of the week to kind of work on that, right? If you have questions about any of this, you can always shoot me an email or come see me in the Summit Labs in the afternoon from 1 to 3 at the same link you used to get to this class, OK? Questions about any of that? All right, awesome. All right, y'all, if anything comes up, shoot me an email or come see me in the lab. Uh, good luck with this. Have a good weekend. And I will see you again um, tomorrow for mentoring and then um, on Tuesday. All right, good job.